Hey there, welcome back to Gardening 2018 at Farmer Brown's Paradise, episode four. In this episode, I'm gonna cover really quickly what we have been doing over the past week. Some of you may know that we purchased a cement mixer for mixing up our potting mix in all of our buckets. It's been a real help and time saver. Randy even likes it now. At first he thought, nah, I can do it by hand, but it is much simpler. He built a platform to hold the cement mixer, which works great because now it's up tall enough that once we have a batch of mix mixed in there, we can just turn it and dump it straight into our wagon. So. Here's a little update on what, how, what we've been doing the past week, and I'll meet you down at the garden, because today we're gonna plant out our peppers and eggplant. And the chickens get the weeds we pulled and they get a little bit of those buckets because it's past season three so they're gonna make some compost out of it. Thanks for joining me down here in the garden. On this row of gutters, I am planting peppers and eggplant. But remember, the first thing to always do is check to make sure it's wicking. Whether it's a bucket or a bag, you need to do the finger test. The top is gonna feel dry and crumbly unless it's rained. Then you're gonna stick your finger all the way down in if you feel some moisture when the tip of your finger is all the way down the end then you're good to go it's ready to plant because it's wicking now i want to talk a minute about the mix as you know if you've watched my videos i like to fill with using method number two the reason i like that is to a lot of reasons actually it gives me a light fluffy mix I can fill an entire gutter for a certain set of plants at a time and then come back like I'm doing today and planting. And also because I can add fertilizer in the mix, whereas I don't necessarily have to go back and add the ring of fertilizer on the top later on. Is there ever a time where I would add the ring of fertilizer even though there's fertilizer in the mix? Sure. For certain vegetables like tomatoes and maybe melons or squash that are extremely heavy feeders, certainly corn, you need to go back at some point and add the ring of fertilizer more than likely. You just need to let the plant do the talking. Be the judge of that. Take a look at the plant. Is it looking sad? Is it not producing well? Is it later in the season, a month? Six weeks in, down into the season, you might need to add the ring of fertilizer. You know, most fertilizers only last about six weeks anyway. Additionally, whether you've added the fertilizer in your mix 
or not and just added the ring around the top if you have a lot of rain a deluge of rain like we seem to get here then more than likely the nutrients the fertilizers are washed out so you need to go back and feed your plants but again the plant should tell you that just take a look at it how is it producing does it look sad Okay, now let's talk specifically about peppers and eggplants. Peppers like to have additional Epsom salt added to the mix. So for the buckets where there are peppers, I have additional Epsom salt in the mix. Both these two outer buckets and a whole other gutter over here that I'll be also planting that are solid peppers. Now, do peppers need extra fertilizer, or do they need fertilizer at all? Well, it was really super windy out there when I was planting everything, and after checking the video, the wind was just whistling. Hopefully, after Wednesday or Thursday of this week, when I get my Mother's Day present, which is a an external mic, with a fluffy wind cover maybe that will help when i'm filming outside but anyway i'm gonna fill in the blanks here um in the parts where it was too windy so in this section i'm talking about fertilizer in the mix and fertilizing the peppers okay in the mix as many of you know if you watch the channel i use method number two as i just previously said I use different kind of fertilizers, but everything I use is organic. For the basic fertilizer recipe on most everything that gets fertilizing, um, I just use a basic 555, Dr. Earth's uh, brand of pelletized organic fertilizer. Now, with tomatoes and peppers and eggplants, I like to use this one it's still dr earth's but it's specifically for tomatoes other vegetables too but the numbers are a little different the npk is 463 and since it says it's specifically for tomatoes um, one that says tomatoes or peppers is good because it has calcium in it uh, probably a little bit more than some of the others which helps promote blooms planting peppers I always top off my peppers while they're seedlings when they have about eight or ten sets of true leaves I go in and snip out the top what does that do well it strengthens the stem for one thing and it also creates a whole lot of branching this is a shishito pepper that I topped out probably at this point about eight days ago and I don't know if you can see it or not. That's where I topped it. We've got multiple branches coming out. This is the next day. And it's calm. But you can see the branching. This is small. So it's going to need some support. Right now it would probably do fine in the wind. But once it gets bigger and it's loaded with peppers might be a little top heavy so I'm gonna need to stake it and I need to time out because I like to use my soluble mycorrhizae and I forgot to bring it down here so pause while I go get it okay made the hike I put a teaspoon of soluble mycorrhizae in the bottom of the hole it helps with transplant shock to use these ag ties but on such a small little pepper plant I saved some of it by cutting it in half and making it a twofer. I like to do companion planting. With peppers there's an assortment of things I like to use peppers and eggplants. Definitely I want to use 
some marigolds with the eggplants because that enhances their growth. Also deters bad bugs. With the peppers, I especially want to put in some petunias because those will deter aphids amongst a lot of other things. Additionally, I like to use basil and chives. That's what I'm going to use in these buckets this, this year with the peppers and the eggplants. So, got a pretty petunia here. And I'm going to add that to the front of the bucket. And ooh, now I'll give it a generous drink of water. I neglected to mention that's not just plain water. Normally I use compost tea, but I did not have time to brew it since it takes 24 hours. So this time I was watering in all the peppers and eggplants as I transplanted with Neptunes. If you don't brew compost tea, I highly recommend Neptunes. You can find a link to it below in the description under my kits. And it'll show you exactly what it is and where to find it. I have a little mulch. My easy straw that I like. Just a little note here about the easy straw uh, with tack in it that I like to use. There have been some questions about, well, is it sprayed with Roundup? Um, doesn't it harbor bugs? Well, if you do a little research about both the Easy Straw brand and also straw mulches in general, with the Easy Straw brand, you will find that it states that it is pesticide free. I think they give it like 99 something, point something percent that it's pesticide free. So that's, that's pretty good for me. If you do a little research in gardening and different kinds of mulches that are best to use with your vegetable gardens, you will discover that straw mulches are effective in reducing insect population and also at keeping bugs like the cucumber beetle away from your cucumbers and your squash plant. Straw also helps deter these bugs in laying eggs and multiplying in your containers and around your garden. Additionally, straw mulches can help protect your plant from the spread of fungus and other diseases that can cause plant rot. Now, when the season is over and I'm going to reclaim the mix in our buckets, we do discard the straw and we also discard the top two inches of every bucket just to be on the safe side that there are not any spores or eggs in the mix. You don't really need to worry about it beyond about two inches, but it's just really, I think, helpful to discard that much before you put it in your pile to reclaim or a box like we've made. And finally, some foil. Yes, I put foil on top of every bucket. Two gutters planted, all my peppers and all my eggplants. I ran out of foil, so I'll have to finish that part later. Hope you enjoyed this episode and see you next time. Have a good 